Yes, once again, welcome to Hen House Studios Live. Hen House Studios is a studio located in Venice, California that records bands for free. And we really encourage you to please visit our website and check us out and look for us. And, you know, you can find our email address at the end of our show and, you know, get in touch with us and, and check out and see what we're doing here. Today we have a very special show for you. We're calling it our Doors Show because each clip that we're going to show today will feature a member, actually two different members from the band The Doors, the legendary band from the 60s and early 70s. Uh, mainly John Densmore, the drummer, and the keyboard player Ray Manzarek. Our first clip is with John, John Densmore, and an uh, Iranian musician named Reza Derekshani, an incredible folkloric musician present, presently living in Tehran who, who came out to the Hen House to record with John. It was very exciting and, and really incredible experience, very meditative music. Again, this is Hen House Studios Live. And I hope you enjoy our first clip with John Densmore and Reza Derekshani. Hey, Ro oh, and one, one, one uh, further note, I would like to make a special dedication to Agnes, who is uh, somebody that has helped us out a lot with our show here at Comcast, filming it, and we'd like to dedicate this show to her. So when you guys are ready, let's roll a clip. My name is John Densmore, and uh, as I wrote in my autobiography, of the doors is permanently etched on my forehead. The Hen House was perfect for the music I'm doing now, which is this sort of exotic Persian world music. Uh, kind of has a drone quality like uh, Indian raga music. Let's see, I used a um, great bass player, Osama Afifi, whose dad was born in Egypt. Um, Christina Barrio on percussion, who uh, was born in Italy, uh, speaks Armenian, Italian, lived in Brazil 18 years. Trilingual, no, five languages. Uh, and Reza Derekshani on Nay flute, which he sticks under his lip and blows and, and does a vibrato by shaking his jaw. It's like a didgeridoo. I mean, getting a sound out of it is very difficult. And he plays a tar, which is kind of an Iranian, uh, looks like an Indian sitar. And, um, and he also plays a sitar, which is a a real small kind of guitar with a couple strings. It's a Persian instrument. Reza roamed the mountains in Iran as a kid with his family. And um, during the revolution, the Ayatollah kicked everybody out. And he came over here in the early 80s. His music is, uh, some of it he sings in Farsi, some of it is uh, the poetry of Rumi, and it's real in, it's real powerful. When I play, it comes from all kinds of things. Uh, I mean, originally my playing was inspired by 
of various mentors. Elvin Jones, Coltrane's drummer, still is one of my heroes. I've seen him play. I'm his friend now, actually. Um, the song tells you how to drum, though. I mean, the song tells you what to play. The lyrics and the, and the melody. The melody, I mean, now that I've been doing a lot of instrumentals or racist stuff I don't understand because it's in Farsi, I always have to say, what's the melody? Would somebody play me the melody? The minute I hear the melody, I know exactly what the tempo should be. The melody tells me how to play drums. Yes, that was John Densmore with Reza Derek Shani. Incredible musicians, an incredible session for me. Our next clip also features John Densmore, but this time with an artist named Gene Bowen. Gene Bowen plays a, a 60s style rock music, also very, very moving and emotional. And on this session, we were blessed to have the uh, original bass player from Sly and the Family Stone, who really laid down some, some great tracks for us as well. Gene is a multi-talented musician. He's worked with Brian Eno. He actually has a master's degree from Cal Arts and Music. And just a super talented guy and also a very, very loving man who works a lot with children. A good friend of mine. So this next clip is with the Doors drummer, John Densmore, and Gene Bowen. Roll clip in there, guys, if you're ready. Test, one, two. Hen house. Record time at the hen house. Okay, cool. Sounds like a pancake place, man. <laughs> hen house breakfast. Breakfast special. all day. I'm Gene Bowen. I think I started writing songs when I was in high school, 1964. And Bob Dylan hit the, you know, hit the circuit, and that was like a big breakthrough was to hear somebody like Bob Dylan. And and I was going to see concerts of like the Beatles and the Beach Boys and so obviously these were big inspirations to, to write music. I wanted to kind of put Gene through some some Tom Waitsy and I mean not really had a, a one of the great opportunities of my life was to work with John Densmore the drummer from the Doors he got real interested in a, a couple of songs I wrote we were able to meet at, at the hen house. Um, it was like a, I don't know, a, like a really a, a life gift to be able to, given that opportunity. Ba, da, da, da. Mm. Just to give a little. Don't play the downbeat. The downbeat. Okay. You don't want to play on the downbeat. Oh man, you guys are rough. <laughs> it just clicked that we could, could get something done on these two songs and in a very, very efficient manner and, and the results were wonderful. Rolling. songs I write usually have to have some kind of real essence to do, either there's a very soulful kind of essence or about a struggle that's, that's, that's real. The Empty Shell, this was a kind of an inward soul-searching thing about um, 
the desert ocean floor where the, where the ocean is no more, geological emptiness, and the emptiness of, of people. Look around me and I see signs of things that used to be arrowheads, scattered shards, rusty cans, lost graveyards, model A dad on the way from Oklahoma to LA, lying by the road today. Someday she'll just fade away. John had the wonderful idea of using a, a box. So all the images of the empty shell were kind of in the music too, you know. The guitar is an empty shell. The box he plays, he sits on and plays by hand as an empty shell of a box. Let me wander out of sight Fade into the desert night Underneath the stars I'll be Just part of the scene I will always be doing music in, in the fashion I do it. I've been doing music for 30 years, and I, I never seem to think about it as, as being a job or a career. I just, um, just sort of do it as it comes along. It's like little bubbles just floating up that happen to be musical pieces, and it, it'll always be something I do all the time. Yes, Gene Bowen and John Densmore and Jimmy from the former bass player from Sly and the Family Stone. Our next clip features the Doors keyboard player, Ray Manzarek, with the Pulitzer Prize Grammy-nominated poet, Michael C. Ford. So it's one of those special uh, occasions. We don't get to do this too often at the Hen House where we actually get to do poetry set to music with this incredible keyboard player from the Doors, Ray Manzarek, an incredible po poet. Um, I'd just like to remind everybody we are Hen House Studios Live. We record bands for free in Venice, California. We've actually just recorded our 100th band, and we're really excited about that. And we would love for you to get in touch with us. Let us know how you, what you think about our show. If you're a musician, you have a band, please get in touch, as, touch with us as well. We'd love to hear your music and possibly record you. So this next clip, again, features the Doors keyboard player, Ray Manzarek, who's got, you know, he basically was the bass player and keyboard player. A lot of people don't know this, but the original Doors band did not have a bass pl player, and Ray played all the bass lines either with his hands or with his feet on the organ, which gave them a very unique sound. He was really holding a lot together, as well as John uh, on drums, who you just saw. So here we go. Let's roll the clip. We have Michael C. Ford, poet extraordinaire and keyboard player from the Doors, Ray Manzarek. Hi, my name is Ray Manzarek. I'm working with Michael C. Ford, a good friend and poet, and uh, we're just making some poetry and music. In the beginning, there were beatniks playing poetry with jazz musicians. Ray, do you want to uh, take a solo break uh, right after... Uh... I always want to take a solo break. The jazz musicians improvised around what the beatniks were reading. We're on two tracks, right? And it was a lot of fun. It was great. It was uh, some marvelous, marvelous jam sessions were held and just wonderful things going on. But ultimately, it didn't last because the musicians weren't composing for the poems. So what I try to do is compose things to his poetry. I read his poetry as he's reading his poetry. So what I make are small compositions that are improvisations, but I know I'm going to release, I'm going to stop, I'm going to break back into the rhythm, I'm going to accent what he is saying. The music is an underpinning to the poetry. So uh, that's what I try to do, and I think that's the future, uh, the new direction of uh, poetry and music, treating the poet as a lead singer and playing behind the lead singer. Extreme Unction for James Douglas Morrison. That strange fume. 
funeral, Jimbo. Faces crumble like flame-cold Chinese lamps. Skins peel as the cemetery earth is turning away, Jimbo. We remember the lizard with dreams of lost grasshoppers in his sleep, as in your strange sleep now, Jimbo. No funeral march, no media circus wagon procession, no grieving mistresses, no wife, no wake, no wail, no black lace crucifixes in an open tomb, no acid spitting tribute, no homage of liquor and blood, no goopy gossip column for teenage America, all this will come later. The poet has a sense of rhythm. Uh, poetry is all rhythmic. It's the rhythm of the words and, uh, of course, what is music, but chord changes on top of that rhythm. So a poet puts verbal meaning on top of rhythm and musicians, instrumentalists, put melody and chord changes on top of rhythm. And that's why I can play with poets because we're, we're all doing the same rhythm thing. One month before you bailed out, Alverno parchment wings transported your poem, which will continue to burn beside exploitation fires fanned by fans who will pretend they knew you. Desperate parasites feeding off your poor dead bones, the vampires of journalism turning your blood into a money hustle. Jesus, it was a strange funeral, Jimbo. We were all dressed in white raiment, as profound as snow. Snow that wanted to fall like pale cicadas in Paris. Yes, Michael C. Ford and Ray Manzarek playing their song, a poetry song dedicated to Jim Morrison of The Doors. We are Hen House Studios Live and we record bands for free. Hear the music, see the stories, check us out. This band, The Doors, is a very special band for us because we are located in Venice, California and we consider Venice our home. And The Doors, they all met up at UCLA, but they, they lived, and especially Jim Morrison, he slept on rooftops in Venice and hung out on the beach. and. As legend has it, Ray and, and Jim actually met on the boardwalk in Venice. Venice is a very special place. If you've never you know, been to California, if you're ever planning on coming here, check out Venice. It's really worthwhile place not to be missed, and it's, it's dear to all of us here at Hen House Studios. Our next clip features John Densmore again, the drummer of the, from The Doors, with Ray Man, with, I'm sorry, with Michael C. Ford, the poet again, poet again. and this piece is a piece that explains the history of drumming in America. It's a poem where My Michael C. Ford explains the history and then amazingly John Densmore drums this history exemplifying all these different styles that are being explained. Really incredible, really talented. I really um, gained a lot of respect, more respect for John's playing after seeing him play all these different styles and all so well. It's really incredible and a difficult thing to do to be, you know, multi-talented within your instruments to be able to play all these different styles. Really incredible piece. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to come back to say goodbye, so I want to say goodbye and thank you all again for watching Hen House Studios Live and check your local listings and look for us online and, and we hope to hear from you soon. And I'd like to thank all, all the people here today who helped us uh, at the Comcast studio here in Marina Del Rey. Have a great day, great night. All right, roll clip.
Georgia's swamp, slave escape, frontier time signatures, 19th century rural south syncopation, black protest to all chains. Hambone spoons, backup buck and wing, chant in cotton field secret code. Blues, lyric, parodies, decorated by banjo percussions. Preceded 12 bar strains. 1928 jelly roll. Morton turns ragtime salty protest into hot pepper. Soon New Orleans marching band through King Oliver. He let Lewis loose. Satchmo. That horn buries field hollers to big funeral drum evolution. On vinyl, in Chicago, mostly blues on wells. Halstead Street, Ben Armstrong and Bechet in New York. But you want to talk about this phase when drummers began sitting down to play when drum sets were called traps. That was an assembling of bass drum, maybe with painted decals seen on the facing skin, usually lit up inside with a 10 watt bulb. Plus, there was a wooden sided snare drum, offspring of the old parade drum and Indian tom-tom replica, with skins tightened by brass rim studs. But you want to talk about the way pioneer jazz drummers took origins of military percussion, and with that they scored heightened cadence, intensely syncopated rhythm and ragtime as a sort of transmogrified martial meter with Mardi Gras roots, sounding like a sprung shuffle, backbeat pulse, and makes you want to talk about the way the things come back in rock and roll jam in studios, into afterbeats. Paradiddles, stabbing press rolls on snares and times, and the things turn sideways into Jamaica with the islands jamming ska music, reggae beat. But before that, you want to talk about the symbols, symbolic time for the 1940s, and how it headlined ride rhythms behind the boppish spontaneity of the solos, always using the bass drum for offbeats and sporadic bombs. And as jazz evolved, brushes used as early as the 1920s would tend to understate the rhythm section. During more or less blues, ballad excursions articulated by sprays of steel wire, fastened to metal or rubber stems so they whispered and whapped on drum skins and across an array of cymbals goosenecked over the bass tub nearby. Sock cymbals, called hi-hats, open, close, mobilized by the drummer's left foot on an attached metal pedal. So, naturally, drummers began to evolve with drum-sounding changes by using tuning keys for diverse pitches and how they lingered at the Zildjian factory in Quincy, Massachusetts. But you want to talk about old guard players, the stick and skin end of the battery, the timekeepers in the human race, the thumpers behind the Count of Basie, the Earl of Bostic, the Duke of Ellington, when he conducted a drum, is a woman. And Stan the Man Kenton's band, challenging dancer of the Rondeau Blue Ballroom in 1940. 
to in any of Woody's herds. You want to talk about Dave Tuff. Louis Belson, Sid Catlett, Gene Krupa. Jake Hanna, Buddy Rich, Sonny Greer, Cozy Cole. Man Brooks, Shooty Singleton, Shadow Wilson, Chick Webb, Slick Jones, and Philly Joe. All the way to the Bebop Cannons, Max Roach, Denzel Best, Art Blakey. Panama Francis, Elvin, Connie K, Jimmy Cobb, Roy Haynes, Mousy Alexander. And Clute. With Latino boppers Candido or Chano Pozo splitting the Congolese apple. Cal Jader. Joe Morello. Chico Hamilton. Frank Butler and Shelley on the coast. You want to talk about the constantly merging studio session talent. O.C. Johnson. Eddie Shaughnessy. Jimmy Campbell. Bobby Rosengarten. But it was battery boppers who became as disconcerting a rush traditional ears as the Charlie Parker disciples of alto saxophone salvation. Or do you want to talk about how their snare skins got finer and tighter so they produced a high-pitched rasp? So the bass drum reduced in size and a sound that became stringent and insolent, and most particularly, the ride cymbal began to emit a high, shrill whine. What you want to talk about all this drumming, maybe without forgetting the new thing, evolution to space age modernity. Not forget the multiplication of percussive rock for...